Hello everybody, my name is Leonardo and today I'm going to show how to install the access control correctly. Okay, so let's begin. First thing we need to do is to identify our device. So we have some models of access control. Uh, here I have two examples of them. One is the VF30 and the other the T5 Pro, the most common, common products of Envis in the whole world. So on the left side, we can see a picture of the VF30 device and in the left, in the right side, the T5 Pro. And I will show you on the next slide these identifications, the, the stupid titles and uh, the explanation of each pin. Of course, talking only about the access control itself. Okay, so here I separated uh, the pins about the, the access control so on the left side the VF30 on the right side the T5 Pro you can see that some of them are common uh, we have on the same on both devices so here they are the NO is the normally open it's for electrical locks NC normally closed for the magnetic locks the COM is the common relay pin uh, open or DS door switch is the exit button pin door or DM door motion this is for the door sensor pin we are going to see on the diagrams how to use them correctly so here we have a straight installation that we are going to use only the biometric device and the lock installing with the relay itself Attention! Depending on the device, there are two ways to install a direct control, that is reader and lock. So, the first one is using the relay only as a direct contact. Soon I will explain why this is the recommended one. So, depending on the device, we have a space to select with a jumper which way we are going to use to install this direct control. To use as direct contact, we put the jumper on the middle and on the outside there is nothing uh, right written, okay? Providing voltage and current through relay. So, in the second one, uh, the relay can provide the, the electric energy and do the access control only with one power supply. With the diagrams, you're going to see uh, things well, things better. It will be easier for understanding. To select the choosing mode, open the biometric device and find in its motherboard the responsible jumper for the relay function selection. It is always recommended to confirm the relay output with a multimeter on the direction of voltage tension scale or on the continuity scale for dry contact control. So, if we are going to use the relay only as dry contact, we always suggest to test the relay's output with the multimeter on the continuity scale to check if the relay can change after a successful access. And if we are going to use the relay as, uh, let me say, providing voltage and current to the lock, we need to test with a multimeter in the voltage scale to see if when there is a successful access the 12 volts change to the normal close to the normal open. So here is uh, an example with a T5 Pro and we can see in the middle of the board where the jumper is positioned. So if we put them to the down part if there is nothing written the relay will act only as dry contact. And if we change the position of the jumper, it will work as uh, 12 volts. So the pin number 6 will be the common, the 7 normal closed, providing 12 volts. And when there is a successful access, it changes to the normal open, providing 12 volts for the normal open. Okay. So on the left side, we can see the motherboard of the T5 Pro. And here is where we can put the jumper. If there is no jumper, the device will act only as dry contact. So no matter if the jumper is on the down part or without jumper, it will work equally. 
and if we put the jumper on the upper part, then the relay will provide 12 volts. Installing according to the relay position. So, using the relay as dry contact is extremely recommended, as I said before. Styling on this way, we avoid processor overheat overload. Why? Because the device only needs 5 volts to work. It doesn't need the 12 volts. The 12 volts is used only for the locks. So, every time we use it, uh, providing voltage through the relay, all this electrical current will pass from the device to the lock. So, this 12 volts sometimes is even uh, the, the electrical current is big and it can damage the motherboard itself from the from the device, from the biometric device. So, when we install using the relay only as dry contact, only 5 volts will pass through the motherboard of the device. So, it won't be a problem. And the lock will be uh, supplied by its own power supply or the same power supply but uh, turning I mean you passing the electrical current not through the motherboard but from the other part I will show it on the on the diagrams for you and another very important thing is the return of the electric current coming from some type of lock so depending on the locks uh, there can be a, a return of electrical current coming from the lock so when you use it as dry contact we can avoid it too so sometimes depending on the project this return can appear in the device and the device can restart after a successful access uh, it can uh, breaks the the normal way how the relay reacts so sometimes the device recognizes the user but it don't opens the door because of the relay it can't change its status so it's always recommended to use the relay as dry contact here is a dry relay mode installation using only one single source so first Please make sure the power supply has enough power to power the biometric control device plus lock. So we need to check if we have enough power, enough uh, watts, enough potency, you know, to, to supply the device and the lock. So let's imagine the T5 Pro with a safety margin uh, uses 1 ampere and the lock 2 amperes. I'll uh, with the safety margin 2. So, as total, we can use a power supply of 3 amperes. So, like this, it won't be a problem, the power supply in this example. So, let's see how the diagram is for this kind of installation. The Unix source is the most used way all over the world. So we have a panel here. This is a T5 Pro panel, but it's just an example. Uh, we can use the same structure for all the Envis devices. So we just need to pay attention on the, the position of the pins. Depending on the device, the pin can be the number 6 or the number 7 or even number 4. So in case of questions, case of doubts, you can contact us by my email or leaving a comment here in this video and also checking the device's manual. Okay, so first thing we need to do, install the source. We have the 12 volts going to the 12 volts of the device and the ground with the ground. Until here, okay, no questions, right? So in the same source, here I just copied the, the 12 volts to the right side to make the diagram easier. But we can put the 12 volts on the same place we took it to put the, the power supply for the device. So now we, we put it on the common pin of the relay. Okay? And if you are going to use an electric lock or a lock that needs power to unlock, we are going to use the normal open pin of the relay. So when there is a successful access, the relay will change status and it will receive source from the normal common and C, normally closed, sorry. 
or if we have a magnetic lock that needs power to get the door locked so it powers off to unlock the door we will use the normal closed so with the normal closed we keep the lock with with power and when there is a successful access uh, the normal closed cuts the power and open the door and in the other side we just connect with the ground of the same source so it's very simple here we have the the secondary system so uh, we can pu put a uh, exit button there is a respective pin for it and we use a normal open button so we put one side on the pin number two of t5 pro but for other device you can consult on the manual which pin we are going to use and the other side we connect on the ground so every time someone pushes the button it closes a contact between the exit photo pin and the ground opening the door or changing the relay status and we have also the door sensor the door sensors works with uh, works like a normal closed contact so on the software or on the menu of the device depending on the model we can set uh, and activate the door sensor function so depending on the time we put uh, after a while after some seconds we after some seconds that the door is open the device can sound an alert for the, the user to close the door okay so this is the same installation but using two power supplies so we can see there is exactly the same but here I separated only one power supply to to feed the device and another power supply just for the relay so it's still being used as dry contact you can see the 12 volts in the common pin of the relay and the other both leaving for the locks but you can see there is no 12 volts coming from the device to the relay okay and now is the not recommended way that we saw why we cannot use or why we shouldn't use this way so here we have only one power supply coming to the device and passing over the motherboard of the device and coming back through the relay so here we have voltage here we have electrical current coming from this device from the motherboard and leaving out so this is not very recommended not recommended because we can see that problems and you can note that there is diodes here that is to avoid this kind of problems but sometimes and most of the times it cannot prevent alone this situation so that's why we should use the other and here we can see the relay status in the other side compared with the dry contact way always be careful with the jumper here is an auxiliary relay installation uh, depending on the project some people like to install a secondary relay that uh, can avoid damages on the relay of the motherboard uh, this can be useful but it's not an obligation you know you can set another relay an auxiliary relay to prevent even more the safety of your installation but if you don't use and use the device only as the right contact no problem so here we use the, the, the output relay of the device the biometric device as 12 volts providing 12 volts to a secondary relay but there is not so many problems here because the electrical current here on the coil of the relay is low so probably 99% of, of probability that it will not will not show a problem on this and here we have a switch power supply and if we are going to use uh, a magnetic lock or a lock that needs to power off to unlock we are going to use the normal closed pin of this relay and if you are going to use an electric lock that needs power on to unlock we use the normal open pin of the relay and the common pin 
we put on the ground of the same power supply. So we can see there is a circuit here from the power supply to the locks, passing through the relay and coming back to the ground of the same power supply. All right. Here is an example of other device. So here we have from C5, is the same structure, just change the position of the pins. From the 08 1000, once again, just change the position of the pins. And now installing with the controller. So here we use a controller called SC011. This is all also from Nanvis, but you can use a, any controller that works through Wigan protocol, depending on the bit. You can, you can use our devices working with other kind of controllers. Our devices in general provides Wigan 26 and Wigan 34 bits. So you can check if your controller has the same protocol. But in this example, let's use the Envis controller. To use Envis controller, uh, we need to change the Wigan out output of the device to Envis Wigan. So if we have an Envis device and needs to work and need to work with this controller, uh, we must change this protocol. Otherwise, the device will not send the correct information to the controller, and the door will, will keep closed. So on the software, here is an example of cross-check standard. After communicating the device, we go to device parameters. And here there is a Envis Wigan inside the Wigan mode. So we, cha we change to Envis Wigan and we save this function. And after it, we can proceed with the installation. Here is the diagram for the T5 Pro. So uh, here we have the Wigan output of the device. So we can see that the in Wigan input of the, the SC011, D0 with D0, D1 with D1. And we always interconnect the ground pins. So you can see in the output Wigan of T5 Pro is connected with the same ground of the SC011 and with the power supply input. So this is very important. And in the other side, we have the locks. Power off to unlock, we use the normal closed, Power on, power on to unlock, we use the normal open, and you can see the circuit over here. So it's the same structure, we just change the device. And here, for the M5 device, is the same structure as I said already. So here we have some numbers. This is the number of the pins of the M5. So to have more details, you can check the pin out in the device manual. So guys, that's it. Um, if you have any questions, any suggestions, comments, please don't hesitate and contact me through my email, through the comments on this video. You can send a, a message to me and we keep talking. I, I hope you have enjoyed this video and we stay here to support you well on your projects, okay? See you guys, bye bye.